the oldest shipyard. Underwater archaeologists from the Maritime Archaeology Trust never cease to delight us with new finds. This time they managed to find what is probably the oldest shipyard in the world. According to preliminary estimates, it is 8,000 years old. Off the coast of the Isle of Wight, deep underwater, archaeologists have found a man-made wooden shipyard that was built by Stone Age people. The shipyard did not build yachts or aircraft carriers. Stone Age people built fishing boats on it. Previously, the age of the oldest shipyard was 5,500 hundred years old, and this shipyard used technologies from the future, so to speak. This confirms the fact that either people in antiquity had much more knowledge than we think, or modern dating methods do not work at all. The oldest shipyard used advanced wood processing technology, therefore, this object is very important for maritime archaeology and understanding the development of our civilization. The shipyard was discovered at a depth of 11 meters, and 8,000 years ago, there was dry land and the area was covered with vegetation. In fact, the shipyard was discovered back in 2005, but only now has technology made it possible to create a three-dimensional model of the structure for further study. It's hard to imagine, but it's a fact. People in the Stone Age boats using their own shipyard for this. This is what kind of technology and knowledge people had in antiquity. I am sure that before it would be very difficult for them to move from the Isle of Wight to the island of Taiwan. And we can can do it in a matter of seconds. Ancient Tiny People in Taiwan Taiwan is a very interesting island located 130-220 kilometers east of China. The history of Taiwan's indigenous Austronesians goes back 5,000 years. But according to the legends and stories of local residents in the villages, before the Austronesians, another equally interesting civilization lived here. They were often referred to as pygmies, or tiny people. They had dark skin and curly hair, and their most distinguishing feature was, as you might have guessed, their tiny stature. All information about them was based only on fables and legends. But recently, a very important event happened. In early October of this year, scientists proved the existence of tiny humans in Taiwan. The journal World Archaeology published an article claiming that archaeologists in a cave in southeastern Taiwan have found the remains of ancient people who belong to Negritos. This ethnic group still lives in Philippines, the Malay Peninsula and the Andaman Islands. The term Negritos is a direct Spanish translation meaning Little Black and is the widely accepted scientific and historical name for this ethnic group. The Negritos are the first descendants of the first people of Sunderland. For scientists, the study of these remains is very important, since these people most likely migrated from Africa. After conducting research, scientists determined that the possible height of tiny people was 138 centimeters. The first people arrived on the island 30,000 years ago, when there was a land corridor between mainland China and Taiwan. But 10,000 years ago, the corridor went underwater. The legend of the Nagredos people in Taiwan is quite interesting. Of the ethnic groups, about half of the Austronesians saw the Nagredos as enemies, while the other half saw them as allies, neutrals or ancestors. However, one ethnic group, the Saiseid, had a surprisingly difficult relationship with the Negritos. The Saiziad is a small population that still exists in Taiwan. They have a tradition called Pa Tai, a ritual dedicated to honoring short people. As the legend says, ancient Saiziads and little Tai once lived nearby. The Tai taught their neighbors medicine, singing, dancing, and other cultural traditions. However, the Tai men harassed the Saiziad women. After that, the Saiziads became angry and killed almost all the Tai people. After this event, a terrible famine evaded them and they thought that they were punished by the vengeful spirit of the pygmies. Since then, they began to conduct the Pa Tai ceremony in which they ask for forgiveness for the sins of their ancestors. Since then, the tiny people ceased to exist. And long before the existence of the human race, our planet was inhabited by giant monsters, and a little boy found a tooth of one such giant on the shore. A unique find of a young paleontologist. 
Just like that, you can come with your family to South Carolina, go to the beach and find something very ancient that makes you shudder. A little boy of 8 years old walking on the beach and digging in the mud found a large fossilized tooth of an ancient shark. Shark tooth is more than 12 centimeters long, which is considered a very large specimen. It's even hard to imagine what this monster looked like 20 million years ago, having more than one such tooth in its mouth and not even 100. An adult individual of the monster had about 300 teeth in its mouth, and each is about 8-15 centimeters in size. And now, in our time, a little boy just holds this tooth in his hands. It causes shock and admiration at the same time. Paleontologists from all over the world have already written their congratulations to the boy, because even for specialists, a find of this kind is a rare occurrence. Otidus angus titans is a species of megatooth shark that lived during the Oligocene and Miocene epochs approximately 32 to 22 million years ago. Sharks have been known to grow to at least 10 meters in length. These sharks are related to the Otidus megalodon, another extinct giant tooth shark. That is, you understand that there were many such sharks in ancient times, and what prevents them now from swimming deep in the ocean farther from a reasonable person? There is already a lot of information about megalodons on YouTube, but I still remind you that the length of this shark reached 20 meters, and the size of the largest living whale is 33 meters. However, whales are not predators, and this creature did not mind eating any living organism on our planet. Let's take a break from teeth for a bit and move to Mexico. Two 2,500-year-old Olmec reliefs. The Olmecs are the oldest civilization in Mesoamerica. To be precise, this is the oldest civilization that we know about, and to be even more precise, we know very little about them. The heyday of their civilization was from about 1600 to 400 BC. They lived along the Gulf of Mexico, where the state of Tabasco and Veracruz are now located. Archaeologists themselves do not even know how these people called themselves, though the word Olmec is a Nahuatl word. Aztec language and means rubber people. These people had ritual bloodletting, they loved to play with a bowl and drink chocolate, and also they were the ancestors of the Maya, also about, about which the scientific world knows much more. And the Olmecs carved giant stone hats from volcanic rocks, this became their hallmark. Old buildings discovered by archaeologists were deliberately destroyed, that is, more than 2000 years ago, someone deliberately tried to wipe out a whole people with all the buildings buildings from the face of the earth. Recently, archaeologists have discovered Olmec reliefs that were made of limestone. They were about 1.5 meters in diameter and weighed 700 kilograms. Stone reliefs have been found in the municipality of Tennessee in Tabasco in southeastern Mexico. It is assumed that the local Olmec rulers are depicted on the reliefs during the performance of ritual ceremonies. Perhaps these people are in a position that reduces the flow of blood and oxygen to the brain, which causes a trance-like state. From the stone hats of the rulers of Mesoamerica, we will move to Africa, where a pink stone sarcophagus awaits us. Pink Treasure Keeper Sarcophagus Dream find. That's what archaeologists called the sarcophagus, which they managed to find near Cairo. As you know, very important people of ancient Egypt were kept in sarcophaguses. It seems to me that the ancient Egyptians buried a high ranking nobleman 3,300 years ago, clearly not so that we can now get him out of the tomb and study him with the help of modern equipment. But how else can we study the history of our ancestors if the papyruses contain far from all the information about the life of the pharaohs? Scientists have already found out that the pink sarcophagus belonged to Ptah M. Vaya, who served as the head of the treasury under Ramses the Great. On all sides, the sarcophagus is decorated with hieroglyphs and various titles. It lay at a depth of 10 meters for more than 3,000 years and now looks like it did on the first day. Historians have little data on who ruled Egypt after Tutankhamun. Therefore, every find is important. The pink sarcophagus indicates that the person buried 
stayed in it was close to the king and played a very important role in the state administration of that time. If it's easy to explain to you in modern language, the Pata and Laya in the modern world would be the Minister of Finance. To get to the tomb, archaeologists had to dig up and take out tons of sand, and this was only the first level of the tomb, located next to the Pyramid of King Unas. Under the sand, they found masonry, and in order to further dive to the second level of the tomb, the masonry had to be strengthened. Through a small hole in the floor, they descended to the second level of the tomb, where the sarcophagus was located. Archaeologists descended in a metal basket, lowering and raising themselves on their own. It would seem that with such technologies in the 21st century, excavations have to be carried out in the same way as 200 years ago. The condition of the sarcophagus was good, but the broken cover indicated the presence of marauders here. Usually different people were reburied in sarcophaguses, but in our case, the sarcophagus belonged to its first owner. This is confirmed by the hieroglyphs and titles found in the sarcophagus. Professor Al Aguiz's team will now fully examine the sarcophagus to uncover the full life story of Ptah and Waya. And around the same time, in the Marianas, people lured octopuses. Ancient Octopus Bait 3,500 years ago in the Marianas, people loved to eat octopuses. And to catch these amazing creatures, they used small cuts and drilled pieces of curry shells. This is a type of sea snail that octopuses really like. The shells were fastened with a small stone sinker with grooves. This tradition originated here 3,500 years ago and lasted until about 1,000 AD. Similar finds have been found on other Pacific islands. This suggests that ancient Ancient people shared their knowledge of fishing and hunting among themselves, even though they were separated by hundreds and thousands of kilometers. At the moment, it is these octopus baits that are considered the most ancient on the planet. This tells us that this type of food resource was important enough for them that they invented something very special to catch octopuses. It is difficult to say what made up the bulk of their diet, but if we take another experience in archaeology, we can say that for the ancient people of the Mariana Islands, octopuses were considered traditional food. If everything is clear with seafood, then it's completely incomprehensible what kind of strange pits were found in Peru. Thousands of strange holes in Peru on the territory of Peru, archaeologists find hundreds and even thousands of artifacts and various finds that defy explanation. I will be honest, many of these finds are fakes, and the creators of these finds simply make money on gullible people. In the Pisco Valley, archaeologists have discovered thousands of holes. The Peruvians themselves call them differently. Monte Sirp, which means snake mountain, and Sierra Veruela, which literally translates as smallpox hill, or or simply a strip of holes. But the most unusual names came up on the net. They are called an incubator for alien acts. These pits are located in very inaccessible places, so there are few scientists who are able to visit here. From this, it is still impossible to explain the origin of holes. They were first seen flying by plane in the 30s of the last century. In the 50s, the first expedition of scientists set off here, which managed to calculate the size and number of holes. The strip of holes stretched for one and a half kilometers, and the width of the strip was from 14 to 20 meters. But the number of holes shocked the researchers. There were more than 5,000 of them. The first idea that scientists came up with was an ancient mass grave. That is why there are more questions. Pits from half a meter to a meter deep. Nearby there are no traces of a person, artifacts of ancient civilizations, nothing at all that could give at least some clue to explain this place. Archaeologists have different theories about the origin of the pits, but most of them are pseudoscientific. One thing is now for sure, that these pits are at least hundreds of years old and most likely they were created by people. You can write in the comments your assumptions for what they could be used in the past. The rarest mosaic in Syria Archaeologists have managed to find an ancient mosaic that depicts the Trojan War. The find is about 1,600 years old and very well preserved. 
found it in northern Syria. Nothing like it had been found before. On the mosaic, you can see the battle of ancient Greek warriors and Amazons under the walls of Troy. You can even see the names of the commanders who were armed with swords and shields. Most likely they were famous warriors of those times. The area of this work of art is 120 square meters, and it adorned the floor of an ancient Roman bath. The Trojan War took place between the ancient Greeks and the inhabitants of Troy around the 12th or 13th century BC. The uniqueness of this mosaic lies in the depiction of Amazon women who fought on the side of Troy. The Amazons were, in ancient Greek and Roman mythology, the demigod Heracles killed Hippolyta, queen of the Amazons, in one of his 12 labors. The Trojan battle lasted 10 years. Looking back, 10 years doesn't seem like a lot of time, but if you bring that figure to our time, it sends shivers all over your body. But back to history. For nine years, the Greeks destroyed the nearby cities and villages, but the city of Troy itself was too tough for them. This was a fortress that could not be captured, but the Greeks came up with a trick that everyone knows about in our time. The most interesting thing is that not the slightest wooden pieces of this giant horse have been found so far. Therefore, for now, the story of the Trojan horse can be considered a legend. Representatives of the Naboo Museum hope that excavations in ancient Erastan will continue. According to them, the city is full of heritage monuments and artifacts. No serious archaeological excavations have been carried out in this place yet, so we can only guess how many more amazing finds await us in the future. Egyptian mummy got a name. A high-profile event took place within the walls of Stanford University, USA. They uncovered the secret of an ancient mummy. The exhibit was kept in the Museum of the Educational Institution for more than 100 years. Initially, it was part of the private collection of the founder of the university. But during the earthquake in 1906, the sarcophagus was severely damaged and was no longer exhibited to the general public. The scientists didn't care either. The discovery happened by accident. This spring, a student of the museum culture course, Ariel Algazi, was examining the tomb and suddenly noticed an inscription. Since nothing was mentioned about this text in any documents, the girl decided to do it herself. It turned out that the woman's name, Sensualentus, was written on the sarcophagus, as well as an epitaph. Let this name remain for centuries. Scientists who took up the study of this artifact managed to establish that the woman died around 30 BC. It is noteworthy that the inscriptions of that era, which are so well preserved, are almost never found. Beer Flood in London Many are sure that the event of 1814 is a legend. But no. On October 17, 1814, at the then largest brewery Horseshoe, one of the wooden wads for storing beer exploded, the height of which was approximately 10 meters. But that was only the beginning. A powerful jet of liquid simply demolished the valve of another similar capacity, and then the domino mode turned on. Almost 2 million liters of beer poured into the streets of London. The force of this drunken tsunami was so powerful that eight people died, but in fact, there were more victims. A huge number of people immediately rushed to drink free beer and got alcohol poisoning. What is known about Egyptian animals? Quite often during excavations, scientists had to deal with images of animals. This is especially true of excavations that are being conducted in Egypt. But despite the fact that the data is quite old, scientists managed to unravel the mystery of the state of ecology more than six years ago. The images that were encountered are animals. They were carved on stone, wood, on ceremonial accessories. And it turns out that according to the frescoes found on the territory of Egypt, at that time there were about 37 species of large mammals, but now there are only 8 of them left. More animals died during droughts. These are varieties of lions, zebras, and even wild dogs. The Mystery of the Origin of the Black Death 
The year 1347 marks the outbreak of one of the worst epidemics in European history. Hundreds of years later, scientists have finally managed to unravel the mystery of the origin of the Black Death. The bacterium Yersinia pestis was carried by fleas and lice. It spread rapidly and in subsequent years destroyed up to 60% of the population of Western Eurasia. And even after that, the pathogen repeatedly caused local outbreaks over several centuries. Scientists have long argued about the origin of the disease. Hypotheses based on historical records and generic data considered a range of possible places of origin from Western Eurasia to East Asia. Some scholars are looking for the roots of the Black Death in the Karakoram region of South Asia. Others consider the Mongol Empire a possible source of the plague. They suspect that even Genghis Khan could have died from the plague. However, Maria Spiru and her colleagues took a different path. Archaeologists discovered graves near Lake Isikul in Kyrgyzstan a century and a half ago. Some tombstones point to a previously unknown epidemic that occurred in 1338 and 1339, that is, almost 10 years before the arrival of the Black Death in Europe. Since then, there have been rumors that those who died in the cemeteries of Kara, Zhegek and Burana could have died from the plague. To clarify this issue, the research team took samples from seven medieval plague victims. The tissues of the disease contained Yersinia pestis DNA. Scientists compared the DNA sequences of the plague genomes from Kyrgyzstan with 203 modern and 47 historical representatives. Using this data, they recreated the genealogical tree of the plague and tried to classify the pathogen from Kyrgyzstan in terms of evolution. Result? The plague DNA from Kyrgyzstan is more original and older than any other Yersinia pestis gene sequence known to date since the 14th century. DNA samples from Kyrgyzstan now show that the ancestor of all four plague lines came from the area around Lake Isikul. Napoleon's defeat in the battle with the rabbits it was hardly possible to imagine that the famous Napoleon Bonaparte could suffer such a shameful loss from a herd of rabbits. In 1807, in July, the commander decided to celebrate the signing of the Treaty of Tilsit by hunting Eard. Before the hunt, he decided to have dinner, and at that time, 3,000 rabbits were sitting in cages, waiting for the start of the hunt. And when it started and the animals were released into the field, they did not run away in fear but attacked the hunters in including Bonaparte. The rabbits clung to his clothes, threw themselves at his feet, and the Corsican had to shamefully flee. And the reason was quite simple. Instead of wild rabbits for hunting, they found tame ones that were not afraid of people. The Fall of the Largest City in North America in North America, there was the largest city of Cahokia, which included more than 120 burial mounds. The city was located in the floodplain of the Mississippi River, and about 20,000 people lived in it. At the same time, for comparison, this is much more than in modern European cities. But there is evidence that sometimes the population of the city reached 40,000 people. Oddly enough, but the ancient settlement existed until the 13th century, and then fell into decay. There is no data on why this happened, and many scientists believe that it was due to a natural disaster. But recently, during research, it was revealed that the city was destroyed as a result of severe floods. 600 million gap in the fossil record a fossil smaller than a sesame seed has revealed the unseen early history of animals on Earth. Previous phylogenetic studies modeling the evolution of groups of related organisms suggested that the animals that gave rise to sea sponges, sea anemones, worms, and crustaceans first appeared 600-700 million years ago. But until now, scientists have not had undeniable fossil evidence for the existence of any animals before 575 million years ago. A new fossil, apparently the ancestor of a Precambrian sea sponge, has been discovered in 600 million year old rocks in China. Its hundreds of thousands of microscopic cells are perfectly preserved in phosphate minerals. The body consists of three waist-like openings, the walls of which are riddled with minute pores, just like modern sponges, which pump water through the openings to filter out food. Earlier, tiny fossils containing 8 or 16 cells were found in the same rock 
rocks, which were thought to be sponge embryos. The new fossil is more convincing because it finally shows an adult animal. A rock layer in southern China called the Zhushantou Formation is known for its microfossils. Painting in a cave Archaeological research is still ongoing in Turkey. According to them, cave paintings were found near the city of Konya, which date back to the Neolithic era. Initially, this was taken for an ancient map of the world, which depicted a community in Chattel, which existed here about 9,000 years ago. But after the fresco was examined, scientists came to the conclusion that it depicts a volcanic eruption. And if you look geographically, then this is also confirmed by the presence of two hills, which are located not far from this place. A pumice stone was also found near this place, the age of which is about 8,900 years. The Roman senator was a horse. The story is pretty well known. The horse of the eccentric Caligula, named Incited, was so adored by the owner that he had an ivory stall, purple blankets, a marble table, and a necklace of precious stones. Caligula made his horse a senator and planned to promote him to consul. Most likely it was not the madness of the ruler, but his mockery of the then senators, they say. Even the horse will cope with their tasks. Skull with the Drill Base the Ottoman Empire throughout its existence waged constant wars, capturing more and more new territories. So in 1480, the Italian city of Otranto was captured. The troops of the Ottoman Empire plundered the city, killed the local population while choosing mainly the adult male population. In total, no more than 800 people were left alive in the city, who were offered to convert to Islam in exchange for freedom. But the people refused, and they were executed. After 300 years, these residents were canonized as saints and were considered the patrons of the city. But after, during the excavations, scientists were attracted by one skull in which about 16 holes were drilled. Scientists have suggested that the holes were not because of death, but were drilled after the person had already died, in order to extract bone powder. And it was used as a medicine. Toilet Disaster in the Roman Empire more than 800 years ago, when the Holy Roman Empire was not yet Germany, a story happened there that would have been very comical if not for the dead people. In 1184, King Henry VI of Germany was making a detour of the Erfurt region and decided to meet nobles from all over the Holy Empire at the Petersburg Citadel there. There were too many guests and on July 25th, 1184, the second floor of the building simply could not stand it and collapsed. The nobility fell through the first floor into the basement, which was just a restroom. About 60 people drowned in feces. King Henry escaped by accident. He was not standing on a wooden floor, but in a niche with a stone floor. Mystery of Ancient Burials in Great Britain in medieval Europe, rich and noble people were sometimes buried as if they had just fallen asleep. That is, not in coffins or sarcophaguses, but in beds. At the same time, scientists have long puzzled over how and why the tradition of bed burial spread from Eastern Europe to Britain. A recent study provides answers to these and other questions. It showed that burial in beds in England began in the 7th century AD, and this rite was considered exclusively female. That is, men were buried in ordinary coffins. The tradition arose with the arrival of Christianity in this territory. Over time, it became a common ritual throughout the Europe. But how is burial on a bed related to Christianity in general, and why did women spread this rite? In a recent study published in Medieval Archaeology, scientists analyzed 72 bad burials in different European countries, from Slovakia to England. At the same time, they immediately noticed that in England, only women were buried in bats. This prompted them to conclude that bad burial practice began to spread in Europe at a time when women were actively moving around Europe. After the fall of the Roman Empire in 476 AD, Christianity fell out of favor. England at that time generally became almost completely pagan. The situation changed in the 7th century when the church actively began the conversion of non-Christian regions to Christianity. To this end, Pope Gregory I took various measures, in particular, 
he encouraged marriages between Christian women and non-Christian men. Moreover, Christian women tried to marry men who had a high status in society. They eventually converted their husbands to Christianity and thus promoted their religion in society. In search of husbands from among the elites, they went to different countries of Europe, including England. At the same time, women also brought funeral rites. Therefore, such burials eventually became associated in England with femininity and Christianity. So why did Christians between the 5th and 7th centuries bury people in baths rather than coffins? It should be understood that in those days not everyone had wooden baths. This furniture was a luxury and spoke of the status of a person. Many people slept simply on straw mattresses. Christian women tried to look for wealthy husbands from the elite of society. In addition, death itself in the Christian religion is not considered the final end for a person. Therefore, Christians equated it with eternal sleep. That is, people thus emphasized their attitude to death. However, the tradition of burying people in bed did not last long. Subsequently, coffins began to be used for this. I will note that this is far from the most unusual rite. For example, in China, it was customary to bury his servants and warriors alive along with the royal person. Microscopy reveals ancient secrets By tiny details, scientists recreate the life of long-disappeared states. Photomicrographs of archaeological artifacts showcase their hidden beauty and reveal ancient secrets of how they were created and used in ancient times. Findings of ancient mummies, long-vanished cities, ancient tools, jewelry, and other objects help archaeologists piece together the past of mankind, while imaging technologies allow research that does not damage fragile materials. With the help of microscopy, X-rays, magnetic radiometry, infrared, and ultraviolet light, scientists can access hidden evidence about the life of ancient people. For example, 17th-century Persian textiles contain fibers of silk thread that were individually wrapped in thin strips of metal. In another striking image on a ceramic title from Gordian, dating from the first half of the 6th century BC, basal inclusions are visible. According to Mary-Claude Bolo, director of the exhibition, these inclusions could tell archaeologists whether the shingles were made locally or brought from other areas. Based on this information, it is possible to draw up historical trade routes. An analysis of the light spots on the gold bead of Fjord's Queen Toabe's cloak is expected to allow researchers to trace the geological origin of the gold. Molasses Flood in Boston and on January 15, 1919, in the American town of Boston, Massachusetts, molasses, a sweet, vicious substance made from sugar cane or sugar beet, spilled over the city. It happened on the premises of the Purity Distilling Company and its molasses processing plant. A huge reservoir, 15 meters high and 27 meters in diameter, exploded and 10 million liters of molasses poured into the city. The substance flooded neighboring streets, killed 21 people and several horses and another 150 were injured to varying degrees. There is evidence that the sweet wave was almost 8 meters high and spilled at a speed of 56 kilometers per hour. Silence is golden. In Egypt, new discoveries do not cease. This time, a standard find by the standard of this region was discovered, an ancient tomb with mummies. But the find in the mouth surprised some archaeologists. They were golden tongues. During embalming, the original tongues were re removed and gold ones were inserted instead. And also that the deceased in the afterlife could speak with Osiris, the lord of the underworld and the judge of the dead. This is one of the most important gods of ancient Egypt. Egypt. So far, archaeologists have not announced the exact number of mummies discovered and how many of them had golden tongues. The excavations were carried out in the freshly explored area of the Khoisan archaeological complex, which includes ancient tombs dating back to different periods of time. The complex consists of three levels and each of them demonstrates different burial customs. The tongues of mummies wrapped in gold foil have already been seen recently in Tapaziri 
Osiris Magna, a 2,000-year-old Egyptian tomb. A couple of years ago, archaeologists talked about the burial of a man and a woman who were high-ranking people in ancient Egypt, and most likely, they even communicated with Cleopatra. Unfortunately, scientists did not succeed in thoroughly studying their mummies. Water leaked into their tomb, but the gold leaf that covered their entire body managed to survive. This confirms the fact that they belonged to the upper class. New Rune Discovery in Oslo the ancient Scandinavians who lived in Norway used runes in their writing. I talked about them in my previous videos. This time, archaeologists found a wooden object 11.5 cm long. Eight runes were carved on it. Runology professor Christel Silmer has already managed to decipher it. The professor suggested that the wooden object was some sort of marker or label for something. This is indicated by the text which has been deciphered. First, you can make out the word Asbjorn, which most likely means Asbjorn. This is a common Old Norse name that often appears in ancient writings and is often written in Latin. The next text after the name was Omic, which means owns me. That is, in the Middle Ages, someone hung this tablet on some object or product in order to show everyone to whom it belongs. The full translation of the text sounded like Asbjorn owns me. This tells us about the trading activities of the city of Oslo in the 13th century. The ancient Scandinavians traded in imported grain, honey, salt, beer and wine, ceramics and glass. Asbjorn was probably a merchant who worked in the Clement Salmoningen area of Oslo, near the harbor. But of course, these are just assumptions of archaeologists. From Norway, we will go to the world-famous Phrygian Valley. Temple of Moltes Revealed this year, archaeologists made a discovery in the well-known Phrygian Valley. This place is rightfully included in the UNESCO World Heritage Site. The found monument of Moltish has a height of 10 meters and is actually the facade of a temple with a triangular roof and niches. At the moment, we see about 3 meters of the monument above the ground, but excavations have shown that another 7 meters of the structure is hidden underground. It has been dated to the 7th century BC. See. According to historians, this monument is one of the best achievements of the Phrygian kingdom. For more than 3,000 years, this unique monument was hidden on the ground, which helped it to survive to this day intact. Archaeologists had no idea what object they managed to find. The monument is located on the top of one of the rocks of Akasuvasi, which formed the western border of the valley. For the first time, the Maltish monument was discovered back in 1881, but then only 3 meters were excavated and the technology did not allow scanning the soil to determine what was hidden below. The temple itself is considered rocky as it is completely carved into the rock. On the temple, you can see the text in Phrygian. At one time, Phrygia was considered a powerful kingdom. However, this state also fell apart and became covered with sands. Historians believe that in ancient times, not only wine was stored in bottles. Evil Spirits in Vintage Bottles For many centuries, superstitious people have believed in mysticism and witchcraft. This is confirmed by the artifacts that archaeologists often find in England. In clay and glass bottles, researchers find strange things – needles, nails, fish hooks, and even hair. These objects are called witch bottles. In ancient times in England, people believed that such a bottle could be a trap for evil spirits. They believed that hair and nails acted as bait and metal objects could capture the spirit. At the moment, more than 200 such artifacts have been found in Britain, and they are also also found in the USA, which is logical. After all, North America was once colonized by the British. Therefore, the culture and history of the last centuries in these states is similar. Most often, such bottles are found after the demolition of old houses. The residents of the house hid bottles of hair and nails next to the fireplace, so they caught all the evil spirits that tried to enter the house through the chimney. In fact, a lot of such bottles were found, just often the workers did not suspect what they had discovered. Basically, they considered it garbage and sent it to the landfill, and those workers who suspected what this could be immediately got rid of the mystical artifacts 
that were fraught with curses. In England, in addition to houses, similar artifacts are found in the fields next to old fireplaces. Most often, people begin to believe in curses and witches when political upheavals occur in the country. People have fear and uncertainty about the future. By burying bottles in the fields, people try to save themselves from the drought. Superstitious people warn archaeologists to stop studying and breaking cursed bottles, because in this way they can release an evil spirit. There are stories on the net in which scientists died after studying such artifacts, but most likely this is either a fiction or an ordinary coincidence. After all, scientists and archaeologists are people like you and me, and therefore they can also get sick and die. Archaeologists were able to discover the next find after severe drought. 3,400-year-old city emerged from the river. Iraq is one of the few countries that has been hit hard by climate change. The south of the country is constantly suffering from drought. To protect crops, the government is using water from the Mosul Reservoir, which is considered the most important water reservoir in the country for irrigation. The constant collection of water helped to discover the ancient city of the Bronze Age era of the Mitanni Empire. The sprawling city with the palace and several large buildings may have been ancient Zaki an important center of the Mitanni Empire. A terrible drought has helped historians revive the ancient city, which was flooded over 3,000 years ago. Now archaeologists are trying to document the discovered object as soon as possible until it is flooded again. In the shortest possible time, archaeologists were able to map the city. In addition to the palace, which was visible from the water, they could see several large buildings and massive fortifications with towers. They also found something similar to an ancient store. One of the most important finds in this place were five ceramic vessels, which contained more than 100 cuneiform tablets. After deciphering the writing, archaeologists will be able to more accurately understand what kind of buildings there were, what role they played, and most importantly, how people lived in the Mitanni Empire. The cuneiform tablets date back to the Middle Assyrian period. To prevent further damage to the important site due to rising water, the excavated buildings were completely covered with tight-fitting plastic sheeting and covered with gravel. This will help save the ancient city from destruction for some time. At the monument, the reservoir is again filled with water and the Bronze Age city has disappeared from human side. And in Brazil, a very strange find of an alien appeared from under the water. Alien's Hand Walking along the beach in Brazil, you can find shells, pebbles, small crabs, and an alien hand. And so it happened with one couple who decided to take a romantic walk on the shores of the Atlantic Ocean. The bony, long-fingered hand looks like the friendly alien from Steven Spielberg's E.T. It would seem, here it is, real proof of the presence of an alien on our planet. Although, not entirely. Leticia Gomez Santiago and her boyfriend, Devanir Souza took many photos and posted them online. After all, we're the best experts on any topic, of course on, on the internet. The photo was stumbled upon by marine biologist Eric Komen, who debunked all the myths about the find. He believes that the hand belongs to a representative of cetaceans, the infraorder of mammals including whales, dolphins, and porpoises, and its creepy appearance is due to the stage of decomposition which lasts about a year and a half. People have been trying for many years to find at least some clear evidence of the existence of alien life, but scientists always come who can explain this or that artifact from a scientific point of view. In this case, the find indicates that the cetaceans that now live in the seas and oceans walked on land 50 million years ago. Under the interdigital flash of the whale or dolphin flippers are five fingers or a five-fingered limb. This is found in humans, amphibians, and a number of other animals, which indicates their common ancestor. A couple, in addition to photos, took a video of their hand to show how big it is. The biologist believes that this is part of a dolphin, of which there are a lot. Usually such bones should not be removed from the beach so as not to interfere with the natural cycle of nutrients in the ecosystem, but scientists are in a hurry to study the recently diseased animals to find out the exact cause of death. After all, this may not be the accidental death of one dolphin, but the emergence of 
of a mass epidemic or the extinction of animals due to the release of harmful substances into the water. From the study of dolphins, we will smoothly move on to the treasures of the Aztecs. The Strange Treasures of the Aztecs Archaeologists believe that a new find discovered in Mexico City will lead them to the place where the main empire of the Aztecs rests. The lost imperial tomb has long haunted the minds of scientists in South America. This is the main goal of archaeologists in this region, the same as in Egypt trying to find the tomb of Cleopatra, which I talked about in the recent video. More than 500 years ago, priests hid Aztec sacrificial treasures near the steps of a temple in Mexico City. The cache includes the remains of a jaguar dressed in the armor of a warrior who is collapsing an eagle in his arms. Also, in the cache were many starfish and coral branches. All this was stored in wooden boxes. Scholars believe that this sacrifice was dedicated to Emperor Ahuizotl, who ruled from 1486 to 1502. In the middle of one of the boxes, they found something solid that they think could be the Emperor's cremated remains. Perhaps this find will be a great discovery of the 21st century. The find was made in what is today known as the Templo Mayor, the main temple of the native Aztecs in their capital, Tenochtitlan. This temple was rebuilt six times. Each emperor wanted to be different from his predecessor. The exact date of the construction of the temple for the first time is difficult to determine. Most likely this is due to the founding of Tenochtitlan in 1325. The main temple had the height of more than 15-story buildings. However, even here the Spanish colonialists did their best and partially dismantled the temple. After the destruction, they used the stones for the Catholic cathedral. In addition to large boxes of jaguar and starfish, there were smaller boxes. One of them contained Aztec incense, the other contained 21 flint knives decorated with images of warriors, a miniature javelin thrower, and a shield. Nearby, a boy of nine years old was found in a round offering. Most likely, he was sacrificed along with a jaguar. According to a preliminary analysis, both had their hearts torn out during the ritual. And all these excavations are completed by a pit with children's skulls, which were also sacrificed. The children were from one to six years old. As for Emperor Ahuizotl himself, his cremated remains are yet to be found. This may take about a year. On the one hand, you seem to rejoice at the new finds of archaeologists, but on the other hand, it's best not to know sometimes. While archaeologists are trying to find cremated remains, a virus from the Paleolithic, unknown to science, has been found in Russia. Virus unknown to science The best finds are found by archaeologists when they work as a team. This time, the team consisted of French, German, and Russian archaeologists in Yakutia. In the Siberian permafrost, they managed to find two ancient viruses, one of which was revived, and the second is not yet known to science. Viruses were found in the intestines of an ancient wolf and mammoth fur. The approximate age of viruses is from 27 to 48 and a half thousand years. The virus that is older is currently considered the oldest discovered in history. Scientists took soil samples in places where there were glaciers. An ancient wolf and a mammoth were also found there. According to scientists, a new virus, previously unknown to science, belongs to the genus Pedoviruses. Its age is 27,000 years. Of course, it is worth studying the ancient world, but most importantly, let's hope scientists will not start doing any experiments with these viruses. We don't need another pandemic, but to try the oldest wine, why not? The oldest wine in the world. Usually, the oldest wines are stored deep in the cellar in some kind of castle or old winery, but for archaeologists, it's too easy. The oldest bottle of wine was found in the German city of Sprayer, which during the Romans was called Noviomag, which is located on the banks of the Rhine River. And so, in 1867, a sarcophagus with a Roman legionnaire was discovered here who was buried around 380. 
Next to the warrior lay a bottle of wine, decorated with the beautiful handles in the shape of dolphins. To be honest, the bottle looks more like a vial of witchcraft Alexa, but in fact, it turned out to be wine. And the most interesting thing is that this is the oldest discovered wine in the world that has been preserved in a liquid state. Around the same time, the city of Grosskalerbach, workers found an ancient bottle of wine that was supposed to be a record holder. However, happened what archaeologists least expected. The workers uncorked the bottle and drank the wine. That is, the artifact was destroyed before it even fell into the hands of scientists. Most likely because of this case, it is strictly forbidden to open the bottle from sprayer. It has been on display at the historical museum of the Palatinate for many years. It is not even taken to various exhibitions. Perhaps they fear that some loader will try to study this artifact on his own. You are probably wondering how this bottle of wine managed to survive. During the funeral of a legionnaire, a one and a half liter bottle was filled with red wine, olive oil, Oil and spices were added on top, and the neck was sealed with wax. Spices with oil formed a certain crust, which helped the wine survive to this day. What was then called wine now has a completely different taste and texture. Wine in ancient Rome was more like molasses, which was diluted with cold water in summer and hot in winter. And in general, wine was a strategic commodity of the empire. Grapes were crushed in whole bunches without separating the berries from the branches. Therefore, the wine turned out to be bitter. Lead powder was added for sweetness and honey was added to increase the degree. White wine in ancient Rome was considered a lower level so it was infused with blackberries, cherries and elderberries to give the color a high cost. Sacrifice in Denmark in Denmark, on the island of Zealand, archaeologists have discovered the remains of a man who presumably was sacrificed. The ritual most likely took place during the Neolithic period. The find is over 5,000 years old. At the moment, experts have found leg bones, a pelvis and a fragment of the lower jaw with teeth. The archaeologists will determine the sex of the victim later on the basis of the pelvic bones, and the age will be determined by the teeth. Let me remind you that people have only two sexes, male and female, and they differ in the pelvic bones. The fact that it was a ritual sacrifice is indicated by animal bones and a flint axe found nearby. Swamp people, archaeologists find all over the world. Some die during an accident, others are buried during a sacrifice. In ancient times, people believed that such sacrifices to the forces of nature would help overcome hunger and other disasters. It seemed to them that the swamp, sucking in a person, would help the people. It's good that people don't think so now, and during the global melting of glaciers, they did not sacrifice people. Find from the Once in a Lifetime series a unique and very rare find was discovered by archaeologists in Britain in the female burial of the early Middle Ages. The beautiful necklace consists of 30 pendants and beads made from Roman coins, gold, garnet, glass and semi-precious stones. A rectangular pendant with the image of a cross forms the central part of the necklace and is inlaid with red garnets in a gold setting. The approximate age of this wealth is 1,300 years. No wonder such finds are called once in a lifetime. Finding such a decoration, again, is an almost impossible task. Previously, each piece of jewelry was made in a single piece and used a unique combination of materials. Interestingly, the necklace is only part of the collection of grave goods. The find was nicknamed Harpel's Treasure after the place of its discovery, and it is one of the most important finds in Britain. Similar necklaces have been found in Britain, but they are all very different from each other. For example, in Northamptonshire, in 1860, they found the Desborough necklace, which is now in the collection of the British Museum. At the moment, restorers are looking for traces of organic remains. According to the ancient rites of burial, which I also already spoke about, in England women were buried in bats. Therefore, archaeologists are trying to find the remains of a bat. During this time, the skeleton had completely decomposed. Only tiny fragments of tooth animal remained. Judging by the jewelry, the woman was a very influential in her time. She could have been an abbess in a temple or even a member of the royal family. But if this find can be more or less explained, then no one can explain the mysterious Book of Enoch. The Secret of the Forbidden Book of Enoch 
There is one book in the world that is considered forbidden among all believers. All the churches in the world do not even want to say out loud the name of the forbidden book. This book holds many secrets and has acquired a lot of legends. And now, it is already difficult to say what was true and what was not. The Book of Enoch is an apocrypha dating back to the 1st century BC. For the first time, believing Christians learn about this book in the 18th century. A secret scripture has been found in the Ethiopian Bible. However, the Pope and all the clergy forbade giving official status to the ancient text and in including it in the canonical books. The book contains one of the most mysterious and controversial religious texts in the world. Although in scripture, it is referred to by the Apostle Peter, Tertullian, Clement of Alexandria and Origen. And even this could not break the Vatican and force it not to ban the book. The author of the ancient book is the Old Testament patriarch Enoch, the seventh descendant of Adam. He talks about completely different events that caused the flood. Perhaps this information confuses the Pope. The Bible mentions that Enoch was 365 years old when he entered heaven. In heaven, he learned about the kingdom of God and received knowledge that he could pass on to the mankind. After that, many angels descended to the earth, who saw the most beautiful women and took them as their wives. In response to this, God became angry and decided to wash away their sins with the great flood. For thousands of years, people have been trying to understand the meaning of the scriptures. Indeed, if children were born from the connection of angels and early women, then they were real giants from 5 meters or more. Angels taught people how to create weapons and gave them secret magical knowledge. However, nothing good came out of it. Humanity only destroyed each other. God, seeing what was happening on earth, warned Noah about his decision to cleanse the earth of the godless, leaving only the righteous. The Lord sent the angels into the darkness before the last judgment. The giants themselves destroyed each other. And that time was the beginning of a new human era. Until now, the knowledge presented in this book has been carefully studied not only by religious people, but also by scientists and even ordinary readers. Indeed, after reading this book, many questions and theories of the origin of mankind arise. This book indicates that the Lord came to Earth from another world and populated it with people. Such a theory of the origin of mankind does not coincide with any of the accepted in different religions. This book once again receives the status of mystery and mysticism. Grave of a Saka Warrior for a long time, there were no finds from Kazakhstan, but there is actually something to see there too. This year, archaeologists found an early Iron Age burial mound, which contained an almost untouched burial place of a Saka warrior who lived in the 5th 2nd centuries BC. Fragments of a sword adorned with gold, golden leaves, silver alley cloth, and arrowheads were found in the pit. The remains of the warrior lay in a wooden box at a depth of 3 meters. According to a superficial analysis, the man was not young and not from the royal family, because the artifacts found in the pit indicate that he was a warrior, possibly a military leader. Scientists learned about mounds in the Alata region in the late 1960s. They were found here in nine pieces. Not much is currently known about Saka. How did these people appear? How they lived next to nomads? What was their way of life? The more archaeologists find similar burials, the more they will be able to learn about those ancient people. But in Egypt, for many years, the authorities have been trying to hide the official history. Egyptian authorities falsify history for decades, archaeologists have been complaining that the Egyptian authorities do not allow excavations. They claim that the Egyptian authorities selectively grant permission to study the ancient world. Getting permission is almost impossible. Only a few US archaeologists manage to gain access to the site, and those are not the archaeologists who do the official history. Basically, these are employees of some secret structures and secret societies. It seems to me that these are representatives of a certain global elite who want to 
gain access to ancient artifacts around the world. As soon as something outstanding is found in Egypt, this place is immediately closed, the press is not allowed to cover the events, and the excavation site becomes under the round the clock police control. No wonder you heard stories about finds in Egypt on my channel, but they were all incomplete. And as soon as archaeologists approach the possible burial place of Cleopatra or other prominent personalities of ancient Egypt, the story of the excavations ends immediately. It used to be that the Egyptian authorities did this in order to become a discoverer, but Russian researchers made a sensational statement. In fact, some of the artifacts found in Egypt become the property of secret societies or end up in private collections of the richest families in the world, and if the artifact does not fit into the official history, then it is simply destroyed. One of the cases seen in the tombs looked like this. In one of the tombs, there were many ancient figures on the walls and images of gods and people. But the gods looked whole, and the hats of the people were broken and erased. And the destruction occurred not hundreds of years ago, but today. The image of the border of the dresses of Egyptian women and men was also erased, as if they were specifically trying to destroy the ornament, despite the fact that the image of the dresses was preserved. Also, archaeologists witnessed how, during the restoration work, Egyptian workers cut off ancient frescoes with chisels and instead created new ones using stencils. So why are ancient frescoes being destroyed? Why are the statues destroyed? Why are many destructions of ancient sites attributed to terrorist groups, as was the case in Iraq and Afghanistan? Why is the so-called world government trying to hide the real history of mankind? And how do the richest clans on Earth replenish their ancient collections? I will try to answer these questions gradually in the following videos. In the meantime, I'll tell you the continuation of the story from Notre Dame Cathedral. Continuation of the story of the Lat Sarcophagus I already talked about the lead sarcophagus in one of my videos and promised to tell you more about the study of this interesting find. But indeed, the opening of the sarcophagus turned out to be interesting and with an unusual continuation. Inside one of the sarcophaguses were the remains of Canon Antoine de la Porte, who died in 1710. And in the second, archaeologists found a sawn skull. It was the skeleton of a horseman of noble origin. His skull was artificially deformed in childhood, and after death, it was cut in half. The sarcophaguses were discovered during restoration work at Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. During the long years of its existence, the cathedral was restored several times. And only thanks to the epitaph, scientists were able to identify the remains of Antoine de la Porte, who at the time of his death was 83 years old, and he died on December 24, 1710. He was quite wealthy and at one time financed the work on the reconstruction of the cathedral. Fortunately, all his bones, hair, and even the beard have survived to this day. It is not yet possible for archaeologists to determine exactly who was the second person. Previously, he was a writer of aristocratic origin, 25-40 years old. He did not serve in the church, he died around the 16th century. Unusually, he was embalmed before burial, which was a very rare practice in those years. Perhaps the skull was cut for this procedure. Next to him in the coffin were found the remains of many different plants, and on his head, during the burial, he had a wreath of flowers, which once again proves that he was not an ordinary person. However, However, scientists from Greece put forward the theory that people are able to hibernate for weeks and even months. You will learn more about this later. Humans are able to hibernate. It's December outside and most of our planet has come to severe frosts and the streets are covered with snow. The day has become shorter, there is no desire to wake up in the morning, all the more we don't want to go to work or cook breakfast. And if not for the alarm clock, we would sleep for days. Or not. Have you ever thought that people can hibernate like bears? Excavations have been carried out on the territory of the Sierra de Atapuerca archaeological complex for more than 30 years. Here is a famous site of ancient people. This place is considered a real treasure in the world of archaeology. Scientists have studied the bones of ancient people and have identified a strange feature for themselves. 
In a certain period, the growth of bone tissue was interrupted for several months. Simply put, people's metabolic processes slowed down. This allowed our ancestors to survive in extreme temperatures and with little food. And the most interesting thing is that this is possible only during a long sleep. Archaeologists have concluded that ancient people had the ability to hibernate for a long time, as do bears, badgers, and raccoons. However, not all scientists agree with this hypothesis. After studying the bones of bears, scientists notice that the structure of their changes is the same as that of ancient ancient cavemen. Some scientists believe that the lack of food during the cold period could not be the main reason for people to sleep soundly for a month. After all, now there are people who calmly survive in a harsh climate, the same Eskimos. However, Neanderthals did not have the opportunity to stock up on food for the winter and plan their diet, and it seems to me that the Neanderthals did not have their own nutritionists. Therefore, they had the need to hibernate for a long period of time. In the modern world, there is the concept of lethargic sleep, which is still considered a little studied mysterious phenomena. A person can stay in a state of lethargic sleep for days, weeks, months, and even years. This phenomena is the body's response to stress. Perhaps our ancestors knew about this phenomena and deliberately introduced themselves into a state of stress, which later put them to sleep for a long time. Write in the comments. Would you like to have the opportunity to sleep for several months? This find is 800 million years old. This find has been the subject of debate among scholars for many years. For some time, everyone forgot about it. People were simply tired of proving the reality of mythical nature of this find the reality or mythical nature of this find. Some zealously argued that the woman is real, others argued that this was a lie. However, now they are talking about this beauty again and they are trying to prove that the woman belonged to some very ancient civilization. But let's take everything in order. Miners near the village of Zhavchik, Tisulski district, Kemerova region in Russia, worked at a depth of 72 meters, and at the bottom of the mine, they found a strange oblong object about a meter wide and more than two meters long. It was like a sealed box, and it would seem nothing unusual. They lifted the marble coffin out and tried to open it. Let me remind you that the find was found at a depth of 72 meters. For several days, massive miners tried to open it. Inside was a young woman, tall, beautiful, with open blue eyes and delicate skin. Her hair is chestnut red, her nails neatly trimmed. She was immersed in a clear bluish liquid and seemed to be asleep, not dead. Not bad so the story intersects with the previous one, isn't it? The woman was wearing a dress, but no underwear. People from all over the village came to see the woman and even came from nearby cities. To better examine it, they took it out of the liquid and before our eyes, it began to turn black. After a short time, she already looked like an ordinary old corpse. The scientists who arrived at this place immediately realized that such a find could completely change the history of mankind. After conducting radiocarbon analysis, scientists determined that the woman was immersed in the marble coffin and buried in the Carboniferous period of the Paleozoic era, millions of years before the advent of dinosaurs, long before the formation of coal on the planet. It is for this reason that the coffin has grown into a layer of coal and ended up so deep underground. They called the woman the Tizzle Princess. They say that after this event, the place was mothballed. The military gathered here and completely buried the mine and closed access here. The six miners who discovered the princess died under strange circumstances, as often happens. Rumor has it that more similar burials were found near this place, but nothing is known about them. Let the story be fiction and let's say nothing like it happened, and all all these are tales of local villagers. However, in reality, there are many stories about other finds that are hidden, that disappear, that they try to interpret absolutely illogically. So there is someone who's trying to stick to one official story. 600-year-old English coin Archaeologists have the most questions after discovering finds in unusual places, where they shouldn't be. That's what happened this time as well. In Canada, in Newfoundland, an amateur historian this year found an old gold coin that was minted between 1422 and 1427. It is considered to be the oldest English coin discovered in Canada. 
Preservation of the coin is unique as if they were made yesterday. The gold coin was found somewhere on the south coast of Newfoundland. The exact location the local authorities hide. They are afraid that treasure hunters with metal detectors from all over the world will come here. Findings like this rarely get into the media. If treasure seekers carry out their excavations, then official history may lose valuable exhibits that could help to better understand the history of the Middle Ages. Who could deliver this coin to Canada also remains a secret for now. If amateur archaeologists or black diggers find out at least this information, it will already be enough for them to determine the approximate location of the discovery of this coin and accordingly conduct their excavations there. While Canada is trying to find out who delivered the coin, Norway has already been able to recreate the face of a woman who lived there 800 years ago. Scientists recreated the image of a woman. We have moved to a new time when modern scientists not only recreate ancient events and objects on paper, but also model ancient people in full size. These people look exactly the same as they did hundreds of years ago. In our case, researchers at the Museum of Natural History and Archaeology in Trondheim, Norway, recreated a model of a woman that lived here 800 years ago based on a skeleton. This smiling elderly woman looked exactly the same hundreds of years ago and walked around the city of Trondheim leaning on a cane. 800 years ago, she could not even imagine that researchers in the future would create her 3D model model and give her a new name. Now the old woman was nicknamed Tora. The name was chosen among the residents through a survey in the media. There was no information about the woman, of course. All the data that is known about her is her burial place and approximate age. And even this information is enough to guess who she was. In the late 1200s, there was a cemetery in Trondheim in central Norway where the remains were found. The cemetery was located next to the main street, where quite wealthy people lived at that time mainly artisans and merchants. Therefore, most likely the old woman was from a merchant family and lived a rather comfortable life. For a long time, an elderly woman walked hunched over and leaning on a cane. She did not have a single tooth in her lower jaw, which was considered the norm for those times. Museum staff spent a huge amount of work on the model. For tailoring and makeup, the best specialists were involved in order to convey the sincerity and warmth of those times as accurately as possible. To evoke positive emotions among visitors to the museum, watching a person who lived and walked here 800 years ago. Perhaps one of the visitors is her great-grandson. Norway is one of the favorite places on the planet for archaeologists. This country often pleases us with new finds. One of these is a 700-year-old ship. Sunken 700-year-old ship. The bottom of Norway's largest lake, Mjøsa, was a dumping ground for surplus ammunition between the 1940s and 1970s. Many weapons were brought here after the Second World War. However, in Viking times, this place was a busy trading route. Therefore, the archaeologists had a goal not only to raise all the ammunition from the bottom, but also to find things that are older. Scientists have created a map of the lake bed that has helped archaeologists discover the remains of a 7th hundred-year-old Viking ship. After analyzing hydroacoustic images, archaeologists determined that the ship was made of wood and was 10 meters long. It is located at a depth of just over 400 meters. Although the images are not legible, however, even this helps to determine that the ship was built after the 1300s. Until that time, the shape of the ships was very different. Before 1300s, the bow and stern were almost identical in shape, and in our case, the stern has an expressive form. Based on the sonar images, it is clear that the ship's builders used a Scandinavian technique, overlapping hull planks, to make the ship lighter. Archaeologists suspect that the ship has a central steering wheel, although the steering wheels of Viking ships were usually located on the right. Due to bad weather and visibility, it is difficult for archaeologists to examine the ship in more detail, so they will continue to study the object and perhaps they will continue its rise to land next year. Previously, about 20 ships had already been found in shallow water, but now archaeologists are trying to study objects at a greater depth. Lake Mjosa is fresh water, so ships can be preserved in it for centuries. 
trees. Of course, metal objects will rust, but the wood will be preserved, albeit not in its original form. Have you ever wondered what kind of snacks people in ancient Rome took with them when they went to a gladiator fight? The oldest snack under the Colosseum it is no secret to many that sewerage of ancient Rome has survived to this day and is still usable. Now, it is unlikely that any of you will want to study sewerage, but archaeologists have been doing this for a long time. This is one of the few ways to find out what the Romans ate in ancient times. For more than a year, they have been conducting their research under the amphitheater, and now they can confidently tell what people ate while attending gladiator fights and performances. After a long study of the sewerage under the Colosseum, scientists found traces of olives, nuts, meat, cherries, grapes and figs, which are at least 1,900 years old. In addition to the remains of food, bones of bears, lions, dogs and other animals were found. Most likely these animals fought among themselves. And the creepiest thing is that people liked to look at it and it was completely legal. In addition, they managed to find about 50 bronze coins and one very rare, about 171 years old, which was made in honor of the 10-year reign of Emperor Mar Marcus Aurelius. The sewerage is the only place where you can find treasures such as coins, animal bones, and leftover food. If for an ordinary person all this seems insignificant, then for archaeologists and historians, these are the most valuable finds. After all, their value is not measured in monetary terms. Judging by the bones of animals, not only lions and bears took part in the battles, but also small dogs, chickens, and even pigs. Perhaps they were used as food and it was interesting for people to watch how a hungry lion tears apart a pig and swallows small dogs. For many, the Colosseum evokes associations only with gladiators and animals, although in fact, a lot of various events took place there fiery performances, imitation of sea battles, and much more. The last performance at the Colosseum that has been documented took place 1,500 years ago, and around this time, the British built the first domestic bath the first home bath in Britain. Not everyone knows, but Britain was also under the control of the Roman Empire, so Roman villas are constantly found here. The Roman villa in Rutland gained in its fame thanks to the 1,500-year-old mosaic discovered here. The villa belonged to very wealthy owners. When there is a lot of money and the possibilities are endless, then you can do anything, and the owners decided to rebuild their barn into a real home bath, where there was a steam room and a bath with cold water. Such a luxury, and especially in those distant years, only a few could afford. For you to understand, in our time there are more owners of private jets than 1,500 years ago there were owners of home bath. The bath was most likely two-story, had heated floors, a steam room, and a font with cold water. In addition, the bathhouse had a tepidarium, or a medium temperature room where wealthy villa residents scraped off dead skin with a metal tune known as trigal. The heating system in the building could maintain various temperature conditions. The remains of the mosaic measure 8 by 10 meters and are the only of their kind in the UK and one of the few in the world. I already talked about the mosaic once. It depicts the plot of the ancient Greek Homer about the hero Achilles and his battle with Hector at the end of the Trojan War. The discovery of this mosaic was Britain's most outstanding find in the past 100 years. And then there's the bath. Now historians have more material to study Roman Britain. That is an important period in the history of the state. The next find is no less interesting. An amateur archaeologist managed to find an ancient wedding ring. Medieval Wedding Ring I will continue the story of the new discovery from the UK in the field of Dorset, a county in the southwest of England where an amateur archaeologist found an amazing artifact. Often, metal detector enthusiasts return home with empty pockets, but David Board was incredibly lucky. At a depth of just over one meter in the mud, he found a gold ring with diamonds in almost perfect condition. 
Back in the distant 1970s, Boyd was engaged in the search for artifacts, but then he abandoned this business for many years. And since 2019, this trip was the second and immediately so successful. He believes that such a find happens once in a lifetime. Indeed, in those days, such jewelry was not mass-produced, and the master put his soul into each ring and created a piece of jewelry with maximum meticulousness. This ring is already valued at $50,000 at auction. The dating and authenticity of the ring was checked in the British Museum. Having studied the history of the land where the ring was found, experts determined its owner's an approximate age. It is believed that Sir Thomas Brooke gave the ring to his beloved Joanne Brooke when they were married in 1388. It was Thomas Brooke who owned this land and was a very rich man of his time. Two intervening bands formed the outer circle of the ring, symbolizing the merging of two lives. Inside the bracelet was an inscription in French, which translates as I hold on to your faith, hold on to mine. In England, a hobby of searching for artifacts using metal detectors is very developed. So a few years ago, a teenager in Hertfordshire discovered a bronze axe that was dated to 1300 BC. Did you know that Moana is a real person in history? Real Maori Princess there is a real story in the biography of this cartoon character. When the scriptwriters began working on the project, they carefully studied the history of Polynesia. To create the main character in the cartoon Moana, they took the images of several local women at once, and the most famous of them was Tipuea Herangi. The Maori tribe is also called the Pacific Vikings because of their militant nature and lifestyle. They even took part in the Second World War and the side of Britain. The story of the princess began at the end of the 19th century. The princess was indeed the daughter of a Maori king. Due to the fact that the ruling dynasty was not numerous, the girl was raised from an early age as a future ruler. At the age of 12, she was sent to a boarding school so that she could better adapt to life in more developed countries. Because of her appearance, she had big problems with her peers. After three years, her mother died and she had to return to her homeland to take her mother's place. She couldn't settle down in her homeland. She completely refused to fulfill her obligations. She changed men and began to drink. Only by the age of 40 did she calm down and get married. During this time, many problems, hunger and chaos have accumulated in the tribe. The basic upbringing was still very strong. The woman was worried about her people, and having given up bad habits, she agreed to fulfill her duties. After the Second World War, a terrible tragedy happened in New Zealand, and Tipuea took many orphaned children under her wing. She raised them as her own, most likely due to her bad habits in her youth, she was never able to give birth to children. The princess was noticed by high-ranking New Zealand officials and began to build ties with her, covering everything in the press. But the woman was annoyed that she was addressed using this title. She considered this arrogant, thereby strengthening her authority among her people. Britain and New Zealand tried to use her power for their own selfish purposes. Tipuea was awarded the Silver Medal of King George for saving orphans, and Britain gave her the rank of commander of the Order of the British Empire. She tried to refuse these awards, but then Britain's relations with the Maori tribe would have worsened and she had to make concessions. As a result, she managed to bring her tribe out of poverty. Maori children were able to receive a European education. However, in her old age she became quarrelsome, suspicious and moody. Friends and relatives turned away from her. The only pity is that the problem was not in her, but in the disease that struck her mind. But when friends found out about it, it was already too late. Tipuea died not having lived up to her 17th birthday. If in this story diplomatic relations were established with the help of awards, then in South America this was done with the help of sacrificed monkeys diplomatic relations in antiquity. Geopolitics has always been a complex process, and at different times, governments used a variety of methods to achieve peace, conclude contracts, or build their relations with their neighbors in this way. So in South America, 1,700 years ago, the monkey became a Maya gift to Teotihuacan during a period of peace and diplomacy before the two groups eventually clashed. The skeleton was discovered in 2018 during excavations under the pyramid in the Square of Columns in the ancient city of Teotihuacan. Then, archaeologists 
archaeologists found animal bones, a lot of jewelry, figurines and obsidian knives. The discovery of a spider monkey skeleton here shocked archaeologists. These creatures did not live in the dry environment near Teotihuacan. However, there were many of them in the territory of the Maya, which is one and a half thousand kilometers to the east. After analyzing the remains of the monkey, scientists determined that this was a female aged five, eight years. They also managed to determine that the monkey was caught in the rainforest when she was about three years old, and for the next years of her life, she already ate figs, fruits, corn and chili peppers in an arid environment. All this time, the monkey lived in a wooden cage, which it periodically not trying to get out. She was buried alive around 380 with her hands and feet bound. According to these data, it is safe to conclude that the Maya gave Teotihuacan and the monkey during a period of friendly relations about which scientists know very little. A similar case occurred in modern history when China presented the United States in 1972 with dependents Lane Ling and Zheng Xing. But there is another scenario for the appearance of a monkey in Teotihuacan. Perhaps Teotihuacan conquered the Mayan cities, stole the monkey and members of the royal family. Teotihuacan was the largest city of those times. According to approximate estimates, there could be about 100,000 inhabitants there. And on our channel, there are already 10,000 people who live and actively watch the video. Traces of Opium 3,500 years old a sensational statement was made by archaeologists in Israel. Bronze Age people who lived in the Levant took psychoactive substances. In 2017, during excavations in the tombs of Tel Yehud, archaeologists unearthed pottery, but analyses were carried out only this year. The study of such excavations is very similar to a forensic medical examination at a crime scene. The analysis of 22 clay objects took place on equipment used by the police. People who took opium in the Bronze Age would never have thought they would be studied by cops from the 21st century. Analyses of gas chromatography and mass spectrometry carried out as part of the study showed that eight vessels contained opium alkaloids obtained from the poppy plant. The jars contained morphinin, which is derived from morphine, as well as opianic acid and the other compounds in the chemical signature of opium. Based on this, we can conclude that the ancient Canaanites were familiar with the psychoactive properties of the poppy. The ancient Egyptians could use opium as an offering to the underworld, or priests used it to evoke the spirits of dead relatives. Back in the 1960s, for the first time, experts suggested that such jugs were used to make opium. Their long necks resembled an inverted poppy head. The first written mention of opium was on 3,000-year-old Sumerian clay tablets, where the drug is referred to as gil, which means happiness. This is not the first find confirming that people used drugs in ancient times. Archaeologists have repeatedly found traces of marijuana, which was most likely used for religious rituals. Golden Coins Hidden in the Wall In the wall of the natural reserve of the Golan Heights, archaeologists have discovered a treasure trove of gold coins. What is unique about this find, you may ask? I will tell you. It's the fact that this territory during the Six-Day War in 1967 was annexed by Israel from Syria. These coins may shed light on ancient Muslim conquests in the region. 44 pure gold coins were found. All coins had images of the emperors Phocus and Heraclius. The wall was built in 635 AD. In this year, the Muslims took control of this territory, although earlier there was a Christian settlement here. The Byzantine Empire, the eastern part of the Roman Empire, was in fact the longest-running medieval empire, lasting over 1,000 years. The place where the coins were found, known in the Christian world as Benaya, it was significant because it was supposedly here that Jesus said to Peter, Upon this rock, I will build my church. Coins confirm the fact that numerous military conflicts took place in this territory. The territory was important for Christians, Jews, and Muslims alike. In 410 AD, after the fall of Rome and the invasion of the barbarians, the Byzantine Empire began to flourish. We are unlikely to be able to find out who the owner of the gold coins was and why he hid them in the wall. But perhaps we will be able to restore the historical justice that thousands of archaeologists around the world are striving for. 
2000 Safari archaeologists demand justice. Egyptian Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli and archaeologists are trying to get the Rosetta Stone and 16 other artifacts back to Egypt. I fully support them, because the history of ancient Egypt must belong to modern Egypt. The Prime Minister believes that the artifacts were taken out of the country in an illegal and unethical way. He created a petition that has already collected more than 2,500 signatures. Previously, the Egyptian government asked the UK to return the artifacts to their homeland, but now they are already demanding it. Mustafa Madbouli claims that the Rosetta Stone and other artifacts will be repatriated. It's only a matter of time. As you can see, global events are taking place even in the world of archaeology, which could not even be thought of before. The Rosetta Stone was discovered in 1799, a year after Napoleon's invasion of Egypt, by a French officer supervising excavations in the city of Rashid in the Nile Delta. The stone contained texts in three different languages – Greek, Demo, and Egyptian hieroglyphs. The object was seen as a cross-cultural translation key that could provide unparalleled insight into ancient civilizations. The text of the petition is as follows. The confiscation of the Rosetta Stone, among other artifacts, is an act of encroachment on Egyptian cultural values and identity and is a direct result of the cultural colonial violence against the Egyptian cultural heritage. History cannot be changed, but it can be corrected, and although the political, military and state rule of the British Empire left Egypt many years ago, cultural colonization has not yet ended. Interestingly, Egypt is not the only country that requires the UK to return their artifacts, so Greece demands the return of the Parthenon marble to its homeland. But current British Prime Minister Liz Truss does not support the wishes of archaeologists from around the world. After all, she is well aware that the popularity of British museums will decrease significantly. Have you ever thought about the fact that the ruler of the state was a man without a face? And even this has already happened in our history. The King Without a Face No matter what anyone says, being a king is not an easy job. Especially if you are the king of Jerusalem and your country is constantly besieged by Muslims. And your main enemy is the strongest ruler of those times, Saladin. And what if we add to this the terrible disease of leprosy, which does not allow to live normally? This is the suffering that few people could cope with, but the hero of our video accepted all these challenges. Modern historians admire him for his willpower and devotion to the country. King without a face, Lepa king. All this is King Baldwin the Force. An interesting fact is that scientists have finally found out which disease was the very first in the history of mankind. The oldest disease that is also mentioned in the Bible was leprosy, and now it is completely curable, even though it was different before. At one time it was considered a curse for sins, at another time divine grace. People have had leprosy since the time of migration from Africa to Europe. Let's get back to the king. With his main enemy, Sultan Saladin, Baldwin had to face in the first year of his reign. The 13-year-old king successfully attacked Damascus, which forced Saladin to get out of Aleppo. Two years later, the opponents clashed in the battles of Fort Damascus and Anduha. The army of Saladin outnumbered the troops of the Kingdom of Jerusalem by several times. In addition, Baldwin could hold the horse's reins with only one hand. But this did not prevent the king from crushingly defeating his opponent in 1177 at the Battle of Montgazard. The stunned Saladin in his heart said to his associates, as long as this boy is in Jerusalem, the city will not fall. Baldwin at that time was only 16 years old. The opponent had to negotiate peace. At the age of 24, Baldwin could no longer walk without support. Due to the inability to blink, his cornea dried up and he became blind. Plus, he survived a very dangerous fever that aggravated the disease. Realizing the approach of death, Baldwin appointed his six-year-old nephew as his heir. In fact, King Baldwin IV never wore a mask as shown in various films. Yes, his face was indeed disfigured by leprosy, but until the last day of his life, he continued to lead the state and fight off the army of Saladin. Saladin took the city two years after Baldwin's death. The history of the Kingdom of Jerusalem ended. But the history of ancient Egypt did not end, which I will tell you about later.
Cave of the Time of Ramesses II. It rarely happens when archaeologists manage to touch places that had not been touched for thousands of years. This time, in the Palmakim National Park in Israel, a group of researchers discovered an ancient burial. While working, the excavator collapsed the roof of the burial cave, inside which dozens of artifacts from the time of Pharaoh Ramesses II were found. The last time they were people, 3,300 years ago. Archaeologists have found dozens of fragments of pottery and bronze utensils, jugs and bowls of various shapes. Some vessels contain precious substances. In addition, to dishes, they managed to find weapons of war in the form of spears and arrowheads. All this was to serve the dead in the afterlife. According to archaeologists, such a find happens once in a lifetime. These are not Indiana Jones movies. This is real life, a real tomb straight from the ancient world. It's a time capsule. These vessels and weapons have not been touched by human hands for more than 3,300 years. Usually, warriors were buried with weapons in those days. The burial chamber was manually carved into the rock in the shape of a square. Perhaps it was the burial place of an entire family or clan. Unfortunately, the preservation of the remains was so terrible that it would not even be possible for scientists to extract DNA for analysis. But scientists will be able to explore the ancient cosmetics and women's panties that were discovered in London. Jar of Cream and Worn Women's Panties in Tabat Square in London, archaeologists have found an eye-catching set of artifacts. A jar of cream and women's panties lay at the bottom of the ditch. It would seem nothing unusual. After all, any girl could drop this from her handbag. But the girl dropped this set not yesterday, not last year, and not even 100 years ago. These artifacts are over 2,000 years old. In 120-150 AD, this place was a small ancient Roman Roman town Londonium, and now this place is a huge modern metropolis. Archaeologists immediately opened the jar and saw in it a white cream with a fingerprint, as if this cream had been used yesterday. After analyzing the contents, it was possible to find out the composition. It was animal fat, starch, and tin, and there are no smells of lavender or chocolate. 2,000 years ago, a similar cream was used as a moisturizer for the skin of the face and hands. It is very interesting what brand of cosmetics the ancient Roman lady used at that time. But the second find is even more interesting. These are women's panties, which are very similar to modern bikinis or thongs. It's hard to believe that more than 2,000 years ago, ladies preferred such underwear. This set was found in 1953 at the bottom of an ancient well. As I said earlier, their age is 1st AD. Most likely, one of you is very familiar with the history of ancient Rome and knows very well that in those days no one wore underwear. And he will be right. Such underwear was not used for every day. In it, the girls performed various gymnastic exercises. This is confirmed by the mosaic at the Villa Romana del Casale in Sicily, 4th century AD. To perform complex acrobatic stunts, the girls needed at least minimal clothing. In addition to performances, women in ancient Rome used such pennies in a special period, putting pieces of folded fabric or wool inside. Here is another example of the ancient Roman mosaic, Fight of the Gladiators, from the Villa Borghese, Rome, 3rd century AD. Have you ever wondered what sounds were in Rome on the battlefield? Sounds of a Roman battlefield the mouthpiece of an ancient Roman horn was found in an ancient Roman fort of Vindelende. The metal horn was a musical instrument used to convey orders to troops during combat. No fewer than nine Roman forts were built of wood or stone in Vindelende from about 85 to 370 AD, creating one of the most complex archaeological sites in Britain and a unique cultural heritage of frontier life. Today, Wendelanda is an active archaeological site, where excavations have previously unearthed thousands of perfectly preserved shoes, textiles, woodwork, and Wendelanda tablets, the oldest surviving documents in Britain dating from the 1st and 2nd centuries AD. Researchers were excavating the floor of Hadrian's workshop buried under the remains of a Scola, officer's club, when they discovered a rare copper alley mouthpiece dating from around 120-120 AD. AD. 
Barbara Burley, curator in the Vindalenda Trust, said, When you find a piece of musical instrument, it helps us get a better idea of not only what the army looked like, but how it sounded. And now we will go to China and see what the funeral suits looked like. Burial Costumes of the Han Dynasty in ancient times in China, high-ranking people were buried in unique suits made of jade plates fastened with gold wire. The cold and smooth plates created an incredibly beautiful mosaic that symbolized the wealth of the Han Dynasty. Similar burials except China were not seen anywhere else. In Chinese, they are called pinyin, meaning jade suit. For centuries, people thought jade burial suits were just a legend. People could not even imagine that the rulers in those days could be so rich as to completely cover their bodies with incredibly expensive jade. But the discovery in 1986 confirmed that these were not the legends described in the old texts. This discovery became a sensation not only for China, but for the whole world. Finally, archaeologists were able to confirm that the rulers of the Han Dynasty were buried in jade suits. The Han Dynasty was extremely powerful and ruled from 206 BC to 220 AD. This is one of the most iconic Chinese dynasties. The Han remain the main ethnic group in China today. The tombs of the Han Dynasty rulers changed the idea of Chinese burial practices. In 1983, in Dinshan, Hebei province, researchers discovered one of the most expensive jade suits in history, which belonged to the ruler of Huai. The costume is made of 1,203 pieces of jade connected with gold threads, the total weight of which is 2,580 grams. The most complex costume consisted of 2,498 pieces of jade. Mosaics on the Sea of Galilee And we will return to Israel again, where archaeologists have discovered floor mosaics on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. This indicates that this place was a prosperous region in ancient times, inhabited by early Christian Jewish communities, and later it became an important Islamic administrative center. Once this place was an important trade center centered around the production of sugar, and the son of the caliph ordered the palace, which included one of the first mosques erected in the Palestine area. The area was hit by a massive earthquake around 749 AD and was later abandoned. Abandoned. Professor Kunin and his team have been conducting archaeological research in the area for the past decade, starting with excavations and restoration work at the Caliph's Palace. Work was suspended during the pandemic, but this year the team continued excavation at the site. And I will continue to work on the channel and will delight you with new finds of archaeologists and interest in historical events. Leave your kind comments under the video, they really help in the development of the channel. Thanks for your views. Bye, everyone!